Welcome to our Rock, Paper, Scissors Peacock Kit. We have all of your supplies included, so take all of your supplies and lay them around here. You've got glitter in your little container, glue, your glass, your two brushes, one foam and one regular, all of your different colored paint. The first thing you're gonna do is pick up each pouch of your paint, take some scissors and just cut the corner tip off and then you're going to squeeze it onto one of the plates. Now we're going to reserve some of each of the colors of paint for later. So don't squeeze all of them onto this plate. Save just a little bit for the end. Lay those pouches to the side using your large foam brush, getting it just a little bit damp, not wet, just a little damp. Go ahead and start in the very center of your canvas dragging that blue color from the center all the way out. We're going to go around the entire canvas. This is going to be our background color, but it's also going to add a little bit of our feather texture to begin. No need to rinse your brush here. We're just going to start with the navy color. And once again, we're going to repeat the pattern. But this time, we're not going to cover the whole background. We're just going to leave some of that blue peeking through. It's going to add more texture with each layer that we add. Next, we're going to go to the purple, and we're not going to bring these quite out to the very edge of the canvas. We're going to carry it just a little shy of the edge. Now, I like to take my template and hold it. Don't touch it to the canvas, but hold it a little bit above it so you can see exactly where that peacock body is going to be. And then if you need to blend a little more out, you can take some of the rows and we're going to use that and these are going to be even shorter than the purple adding it where you want more and less where you don't you don't need to worry about where the body of the peacock is going to be we'll paint that with a different color later I'm using a little bit of the navy at the bottom to give a little depth to it anywhere you would like to add a little more of one of those colors go ahead then give your brush a really good rinse. You don't want any of the other colors on it before you start with the white. Don't forget at any point, if you need to pause this video, you can let it dry or you can use a blow dryer to dry it a little quicker. I'm gonna take this white paint and just feather it out from where we know that body of the peacock is gonna be laying. Don't over blend it. You don't really want it to become just one color. You want there to be those streaks of color and that feathery kind of texture that's left there. I like to double check where my peacock is going to be laying. If I have lines that are going up and down where I want them to go out where it would look like a feather, then I need to correct that before I finish. And then you can go back in and add any other colors that you would like. If you feel like you want more of one color than another, go ahead and add that now. I'm adding a little more white around where I feel like the body is going to be. It might highlight the peacock itself and not blend into the color of the body as much. Now on your second plate, we're going to put your other colors in a minute. Make sure your whole canvas is completely dry before you begin to trace your template. Now you're going to use the colors that you laid aside and we're going to squeeze those onto our plate. With the navy color, I want you to make two different places for it. The one on the bottom is gonna be for the head and the eye details. The ones at the top are gonna to be blended, so be careful not to bump into that color at the bottom of the plate. So the first thing we're gonna do is begin with that blue. We're gonna take some of the rose. It doesn't take a lot. I even dip into some of the purple that I had above. 
and some of the navy, and I'm beginning to mix these colors together to create the color for my body. It's gonna be a little bit of a darker blue. You make it the color that you want. Then we're gonna take our small brush and paint the whole inside of where we traced that template. The beak and everything, it just makes a nice background for us to begin on. I'm gonna take some of that lighter blue on my brush, and I'm going to start adding some of the details to it. I want to make it look like it has more depth to the body, to the head. I'm going to use some of that rose color. I just think it's so pretty alongside that blue and where you blend it together, it tends to become more of that purplish color. Don't be afraid of them kind of blending, but don't over blend and lose the texture that you're getting here as well. And you're gonna clean that excess paint off. If you wanna wipe it onto a paper towel, that's fine. I'm just wiping it on the edge. And I'm gonna load only the tip of my brush. And I'm gonna go in and begin to paint the highlights onto the head and the beak. I'm gonna use some of that darker navy and add a little more depth to the body and in different areas. And you can always go back in and use some of that original blue that you used for the body and work it together to kind of blend those colors in. I use some of that darker navy right around where that neck is going to be and you're going to kind of pull it in there almost like a little ring around its neck a bit a little bit of that darker blue over the top of the head and blending it all around inside there here we have that light blue to add a little more highlight and now I literally just have paint on the very end of my brush and I'm just dabbing it. I'm not really streaking it, I'm just kind of dabbing it to make those lines for the plume on his head. It's a little easier than, than trying to brush it per se. Go ahead and use just a little bit of that dark navy. The corner of the brush works very well for these small areas. Don't overload it with paint, just use enough. And I would recommend using that paint at the bottom of your plate that doesn't have any other colors mixed in by accident. Put a little nostril in there on the beak. And we're just gonna, again, kind of dot along the beak with just a little bit of paint on the very end of the brush and that's going to add that line to the beak and that nice detail there. I did rinse my brush in between. I didn't want any other colors to get into the white. And we're going to use that white to do some accents around the eye. Now use the corner of the brush here. Don't make it too perfect of a line. It does need to look like it's a little bit of a feathery kind of edge around the eye. So those little points that stick out are a good thing here. You can even go back in and touch it up around the plume to make it look like it has that and drag some of that white along the plume edge. And those are gonna give them a nice highlight and make them stand out more. Add a little bit of a white detail to the beak, running along the edge and even to the nostril, makes it stand out nice, and then along the edge of the beak. I'm going to go in and add some of the white to the neck and the stomach, give it some nice detail, give it some more depth, again not really blending too much. I'm gonna use the tiniest bit of paint on just the corner of my brush, and now we're gonna make an oval for the eye. 
don't worry about it being a perfect line. It's okay if it's a little spotted. That is just gonna make it look more like feathers in there. Now using the end of the brush, we dip the end only in paint and just dot, one dot, right into the eye. Now I just mixed a little bit of color here and there. I wanna add a little more detail with my finer brush now and finish out Make it look the way I want it to look. You put more color in there that you like for yours. I want to go in and darken around the eye a little bit so it stands out really nice. And now for mine, I would recommend drying this first. Now you're going to begin adding your navy paint that you had put aside. I used a separate plate, you don't need to do that. You're gonna, while the paint is wet, add that glitter. But be sure the whole canvas is dry before you add any glitter because it will stick to anything that is even slightly damp. You're gonna do seven plumes for it, for the feathers, making sure that paint is still wet each time you add that glitter to it. You add a little detail on the top of the head, the nostrils, anywhere that you feel like you want some of that glitter and just tap it in there a little bit. It's always nice to have a tray or something that you can tap these onto to get rid of the excess. And now for the purposes of the video where we wanted to finish so that you could actually see it completed. I used the glass bead and went around it with the glue. You can feel free to put the, the glue on the bead and go ahead and attach them to the end if you prefer to do that. I would recommend if you do that, don't pick it up until it's completely dry first to get the excess off. For me, I wanted to be able to show you that you could tip it and if the beads are on there, they do tend to slide. So I waited until the end. If you do wait till the end, just take the bottom of your brush and just kind of scoot the glass out of the way and make a nice hole for those glass beads to fit right down into. Now you're gonna take your glue. And I wanted to make some nice detail on the stomach of the peacock and give it more of a 3D kind of effect. You can use either of the glasses, or you could use both if you would like. I just use blue on mine for the stomach. I like to press it down just a little bit to make sure it's nice and secure, and then tip off the extra. If you do this quickly, it tends not to slide as much. Then we're gonna go ahead and fill in the holes that I have created inside of each feather and we're just going to place our beads and that is going to be the end of our peacock video i hope you enjoyed it 